Hello and welcome to another episode of Married Life with Los and Des. My name is Carlos and this is my wife Desiree. We're the Rosados and we're here to talk about marriage. Today we're going to continue with part two of our journey to freedom from porn addiction. And today is going to be uh, based on Desi's experience um, with my addiction and, and the way that that affected her. And um, we're going to begin with question one. How did you find out about the porn addiction? Uh, for me, I think I mentioned it in the last video but slightly, but it started with uh, an unusual charge to our pay-per-view account that came in through into our phone bill. Yeah. And we actually, you know, I fought that and didn't think it was you. I thought it was some kind of glitch. So... Um, I didn't really have a I think if there was any issue then it was more afterwards when um I started to find different things in the search bar of Google and even in your behavior yeah you know there was just things that were not it, things that had changed and you know I found certain um, things in the history of the computer and it started to make me ask questions um, and that was when I really started to do my own digging I guess but that was when I found out I guess that it was a thing even that's good um, how did that affect you or made you feel I mean at first I think because I was very naive and I didn't really understand um, I didn't have a real knowledge of what a porn addiction was and that it wasn't even a thing you know so I was kind of at first I thought it was oh it's just something like he's he's he might be looking at certain things but I didn't think it was like an addiction mm -hmm. like I was like eh, you know he can just stop because I didn't understand it you know what I mean yeah. um but I think when when I realized like when it got deep we got further into this and I, it started becoming repetitious and I realized that there was a real problem here because you couldn't stop you mm -hmm. know it wasn't as easy as just just oh I'll just stop looking at this stuff like I started to do my own re research because that's just that I've always been that way when I want to know about something I learn I learn you know so I started to find books and articles and read what this is and that's when I actually learned that there's a term called a porn addiction I didn't even know that you know and so and so I started to really do my own um, digging because I wanted to understand what what we were dealing with you know mm -hmm. and when I started to really research this stuff it was a little overwhelming because I'm like what the heck did I get into like what is this and you know and we didn't know back then people didn't talk about this stuff nobody right. you know it's like and who could you talk to you know what I mean it's like you can't really go to like you know your mom or your dad and say hey you know can you help me with this uh, um they they probably are clueless you know so yeah. it was when when we, I really realized what we we're dealing with and it started to become a really big issue to the point where you were you became very distant that yeah. was always the first sign yeah. and I started to learn s different signs and different things that that ways that it affected you you know what I mean mm -hmm. but it made me feel honestly it it made me I already dealt with rejection issues right so it made me really feel like trash like mm -hmm. I could never be good enough look at these perfect looking bodies you know I could never measure up to that you know I, and it just made me really reflect on myself even more negatively you know yep. it made me feel like like I wasn't wanted like I was never gonna measure up like I didn't even know how to start yeah you know? yeah um, you, you talked about signs that showed that I was involved with porn uh, elaborate on that a little bit more like you, you mentioned um, the distancing Distance. Yeah, I remember at first it wasn't that obvious, but as I realized that it was a bigger problem and you just fell so deep into it, it was like you became very, very just completely disconnected. And you already had like trouble connecting, mm -hmm. but it was like extreme to the point where it felt like you were in the room, but you weren't really in the room. And that was with me, with the kids. Yeah. But like, you know, you and I, I've always tried to like maintain that. So it was like, 
you know, that was the first thing. And I also noticed you gained weight. You kind of stopped caring about the way that you Waking, carried yourself. I remember, yep. You know, it was like even you even didn't take showers sometimes. And you just, your appearance was like just not kept. Mm-hmm. You know, you didn't really cut your hair. You just combed it, slicked it back. <laughs> you remember? It was like, there was a lot of things, but there was certain things that I know I would notice in a lot more time just alone. Yeah. You know, whether it was locked in the bathroom or locked in our room or in our room, we had the computer, which we tried to move it out afterwards to see if that helped, which it didn't. Yeah. But, you know, there was just multiple little things that I noticed. And, and as it became a cycle and it was like, you would try to come out of it and you know we might see a little improvement but then i would instantly be able to tell when you were just falling back into it again because it was like this instant disconnect yeah you know and there was no one at all you could turn for advice no other other than counseling yeah and that was even that was after a while that we had really been dealing with it and we tried multiple counselors back then and um didn't really do much for me (laughs) to be honest it was you know kind of like you know just well this is you know you got to deal with this and you know you shouldn't feel this way you shouldn't feel like it's you because it's not and you know I couldn't really no one around me no one around us was open about this stuff so even if somebody was dealing with it I didn't I wouldn't know who to turn to yeah you know and it was and I also felt like I it's, it's odd, but, like, I also felt like I wanted to protect you. So, like, I didn't want to go to the wrong person, and then they're running their mouth and talking about, like, oh, my God, look at what's going on over here. You know, like, I mean, not that not that I really, not, you know what I mean. I care, but I I don't care. But, <laughs> but, but for you, it was more you. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't want people to look at you like you were this horrible person because mm-hmm. I knew your heart. I knew that you you weren't a bad person it was just i knew that this was a struggle for you so i really went through it alone you know most of the time and i mean thank god i have god and you know he was really my helper through it all Hmm. you know now you stayed with me through all of this and i really appreciate it because had you not i would not have overcome the porn addiction i would not I probably would not have had the strength to fight it on my own. Mm-hmm. What made you stay? I think a lot of things. First of all, I I loved you. I did. And I, I saw in you a willingness to try. Even though there were times where you felt overwhelmed and you felt like you couldn't do it. But you always got up and kept trying. You know, you never, like, completely surrendered to it where it was like... You know, yeah, we had a few times where we almost did leave each other because it was just so overwhelming and hurtful and, you know, it was it was hard. You know what I mean? You felt like you couldn't fight. I felt like I didn't know what to do anymore. And I, it was it beat me down, like not you, but just the dealing with with this constantly and me trying to even heal as a person. And this just kept kicking me down. It was just it was hard mm-hmm. because no matter what they say they'll tell uh, they'll always tell the spouse that oh it has nothing to do with you you know it's not you it's not you know it's 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 their issue which is the truth but when you're the spouse of that person you have feelings and emotions and and it's hard because it's hard not to not to let it affect you because it's like it really does feel like your spouse is like sleeping with a ton of other people you know what i mean that's just how it feels you know so it does it's hard you know but with you it was like i just knew that i knew somehow that you really wanted to overcome you know and and on top of that it's like you know like the the dreams that i, that I would have you know there was one dream where i i it, i believe it was a i believe it was a warning dream that it's what would have happened had you not, you know, had you not fought this and you just, if you had just given into it. And in mm-hmm. the dream, I had seen myself on my wedding day and I was about to marry another person. And I can remember in the dream just knowing a lot about you, a lot about everything that had, was going on. And 
in the dream you had just kind of surrendered completely to the porn addiction and you didn't fight it and I left mm -hmm. you know and I married someone else mm -hmm. but even in I remember even that day I, I knew within myself that had even that day had you told me that you wanted to fight I would have walked away and I still would have I still would have st stuck with you wow you I know? remember that dream that was one of the really big turning points for me it really made me think and I knew I, I took it the same way that was like a huge warning how many years ago was that that was that was a few years ago right no that was a long time ago a long time that ago was a long time ago more than a few years ago oh yeah I mean yeah that was many years ago probably 15 years ago wow 15 16 years ago it was wow. a long time ago now what what have you learned through this whole thing this whole process this issue um, I've learned more than I could say. Um, <laughs> I could probably write some books. <laughs> um, I know you could. <laughs> I learned, first of all, I mean, it forced me to learn about the reality of porn and sex addiction. Yeah. And it, it really helped me to know that there's a lot of women out there that, and men, I shouldn't say that because it's, there's women that struggle with the same addiction, but there's a lot of spouses out there that, that are, hurt by this a lot of marriages that are hurt by this a lot of and then a lot of people who struggle with the actual addiction and and it's it seems to be so like you said last time so taboo where it's like yeah it's not discussed the way that it should be and i look at it this way it's a sin just like you have other sins you know some people struggle with drinking some people struggle with drugs some people struggle with pride some people struggle with you know there's all kinds of sins but well, this needs to be talked to, talked about, you know what I mean? And I feel like, you know, going through all this, first of all, I realized that I was, I could go through more than I realized. Like there was some points where I almost broke and I almost, I almost gave up because it, it was like, it really, mm -hmm. it really broke me down. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the it world, forced the, me to, to rely on God and yeah. to run to him. And I honestly, through this, I I grew even closer to God than I ever was because I had no one else. I had nobody else to, to talk to. I had nobody else to run to and to mm -hmm. cry with. And I cried so many tears, <laughs> like I didn't never knew I could cry so much. But you know, he through this he helped to heal me. And and I learned. I also learned that there is a greater purpose for marriage through this. You know, I read this book, and I'm gonna find the title of it after and post it in the in the thing, the the link, the description. Sorry, um, <laughs> but it was for spouses that are dealing with this issue, and that book, I can't even tell you how it just it ministered to me, and it really gave me a different viewpoint on, you know, what it means to stay with with a spouse who is dealing with this addiction, and I learned that this was more than just about you know just staying with him it was like i had to learn that i had a place where i had to team up with you i had to like stand literally be your helper stand by your side and help you fight and it wasn't that it wasn't my fight i couldn't fight this for you but i could support you right i could i could pray with you i could i could you know give you encouragement you know because i know you didn't have a, a lot of support either so a lot of it we went through ourselves until we found mark de jesus mm -hmm. you know who really helped walk us through this but yeah but you know i learned that god had put me here in our marriage for that time to to really help you th through this and I don't recommend that for everybody. I don't want to say, oh, like, you know, they talk about having an accountability partner or whatever. I, I, I don't recommend necessarily that for spouses unless you really know and you can you you can handle it and you know from God that this is I can do this. You know what I mean? Because not everybody can handle it. Yeah. But but I I knew and it developed the strength within me like, wow there's a greater purpose mm -hmm. and god showed me multiple times that that by me staying with you through this he was going to also teach you a lot and he did you know and and he he showed me one of the greatest things was that through me staying with you you were going to learn what the love of god really was <laughs>
and that impacted me so greatly because I know when I really learned really really got the revelation and knew what God's love for me was it changed my life and I wanted that for you and I knew that when you really experienced that it would change you yeah you know and yeah so I learned a whole lot <laughs> okay now you said you said a mouthful but um, what any specific uh, advice that you would give to the spouse of a porn addict or any or somebody who's really struggling with pornography I would say first of all um, look at your situation and look at it honestly and I'll say this things would have been very different had you not been w willing to fight had you just given into it I yeah. probably would have left because there came points where I was like and and I even knew from God that if I had left I wouldn't have been like condemned or anything like that. I mean, he would have forgiven me. I would have mm -hmm. probably moved on. But I, our situation was different. Like I saw the willingness in you to fight. I knew that you loved me under all that, even though it was hard to see it at times. So I'd say, look at your situation honestly. And if you are with someone who's really willing to fight this thing, stay with them. Get whatever help you need. Read whatever books you need. Reach out to us if you need to. You know, mm -hmm. we... I mean, I've always said I would love to be to someone else what I wish I had during that time because I didn't have anybody. You know, on the other hand, it did give me such a great opportunity to draw closer to God, you know. But if you are with someone who is not willing to fight, you might really want to look, you know, look at your situation. And if you need to even, it doesn't mean that you have to leave them permanently, but you might need to take a break and say, listen, you need to you need to step out until you have until you really know what you want you know if you're not willing to fight and to fight for us and to overcome this and you just want to live with this and that's your choice well then that's your choice hmm. you know and sometimes doing that might force somebody to really look at themselves and analyze and say wow maybe i do need to deal with this you know and i'm yeah. not a professional counselor so i'm not trying to you know tell anybody what to do but you know if you are with somebody who wants to fight it stay with them and pray and get the help that you need you mm. know cuz there's hope awesome um what was the worst part of going through this this whole thing i think wow it was a lot but i think i think the hardest part was was the fact that it made me feel like it made me feel like like almost cheap you know you know when when we were when it was at its worst mm -hmm. I felt like nothing like I felt worthless you know and I felt like I could never be pretty enough I could never be look be enough for you you know because you look at these perfect looking pictures and people and and it's like no woman in reality is going to measure up to that you know what i mean and it i think it was hard for me to go around this so many times because it felt like this never-ending merry-go-round it was like oh maybe there's a little hope nope here we go again nope here we go again and it was yeah. for years i think it yeah. was the fact that it was for so many years that we dealt with this that you know it it also it made it hard for me because I also created barriers. I created walls mm -hmm. because I got so tired of being hurt that it was like, you know, I almost became calloused. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, that, and was, that was like probably the worst, I think. Yeah, I remember those were really hard, hard moments. And what, what would you say uh, was the best part of coming out of this? I think the best part of, you know, walking through this was the intimacy that it created between us. You know, after the fact, when you, when you, we really looked and was like, wow, you're really free from this. It was like, it was just, it, it, it was amazing because, you know, one thing I had always wanted was I wanted you to have eyes only for me. And I know, I know I'm not trying to sound like weird or whatever but you know what I mean the way that a husband should look at his wife you know what yeah. I mean and 
and through going through all that it was like I didn't never had that I always had to you know it was like subconsciously I always wondered if you were looking at something or if you were looking at someone or you know and I always wanted that you know and to and the day that I remember that we had that it was like it just it even helped me to break down those walls you know and I mm-hmm. it was I was able to really be like love you freely the way I was supposed to mm-hmm. you know and and it did it develop <clears throat> such an intimacy because we could talk about anything you know what I mean and you could come to me and tell me if you were struggling you know what I mean and whatever and it just I felt like it really it really did cr- it created such a closeness with us you know yeah so there you have it folks uh pornography does some serious harm to the uh, what I would call the victim spouse you know and it's such a selfish sin and um if you if you partake in that and you don't think it's a bad thing I'm going to take you to uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 27 through 28 which says your ancestors have been taught never commit adultery and this is Jesus speaking however I say to you if you look with lust in your eyes at the body of a woman who is not your wife you've already committed adultery in your heart and so even though you're not physically with a woman or physically with another man you're committing adultery just by what you're allowing your imagination to dwell on so this is a very serious sin and um, I thank God for the grace that he's given me to overcome it if it had not been for for his grace and if it had not been for my wife standing by me I wouldn't be here I'd, I'd be I would be divorced and I, w- I would even, I don't even want to imagine where I would be right now mm-hmm. but um I thank God that you know for the willingness to that he gave me to fight you know because to be completely honest I was bound for so many years that I didn't believe I didn't believe that I can be free yeah. and I had a I had a really hard time believing that that um I deserved my my wife that I deserve my family and so you know all these things um, bombarding me weren't helping but um I'm so thankful again because you know there is hope for yes. anyone struggling with this you know if I can tell you how many years oh god it's way over 15 this this was a this was a battle um, that um I was going through and she was suffering through you know and again you know if it would not have been for God's grace we wouldn't be here That's it. but again it, it, it is it is possible if you are a struggling spouse you're struggling with pornography or the spouse of somebody this is something that can be overcome if you if the two of you agree on any one thing the bible says you will have it you know the there's power in agreement there's power in coming together and really fighting this and trusting and relying on god's strength so don't give up yeah and um just to end this um i don't know if you got anything else to say i just wanted to i mean i agree with what what you said it's there's hope you know, you might go through moments when when it's really you're really in the deep parts of this. It can feel overwhelming and it can feel hopeless. And, you know, I'll be honest, it took me years before I could even really talk about this. Like, I mean, there was a time I would not have been able to talk about this this way without bawling my eyes out because it was still so raw and fresh, you know. Yeah. But we always wanted to share our story because we know that there's many other people who are going through this we know that there's many other people who are suffering through this and it's one of those secret sins that people just don't talk about and we want to be able to talk about this and help other people and and just let people know that there is hope you know you could you you could feel hopeless but you can make it through this and you you might need help and that's okay you know what i mean but you know 
f- keep fighting, you mm-hmm. know, and, and lean into God and trust God and ask God for his help and to bring the right people into your life to walk you through this, you know, because it's possible and, you know, you can find that freedom and have such a great marriage. Well, and I didn't think that I would ever be sharing this, especially on video. You know, I mean, this is going in all different parts of the world. <laughs> you know, I never thought that I'd be sharing my story, but being that God has set me free, why should I be selfish mm-hmm. and keep that freedom to myself when others can hear our testimony and, and be delivered and know that there's hope, right? So, you know, I just I just thank God for His grace, and I thank God, you know, our, our marriage, I always say this, it isn't perfect, but it is great. It is awesome. You know, we we really reap the benefits of not giving up. Yeah. You know, and that's an understatement. I mean, our marriage today, you know, back in the day, we, we would have never seen this. We would have <laughs> never seen that it would have become what it is now. And it took work, but we're here and we're able to help so many other people. So um, if this is... Um, pretty much the end. Um, why don't you say a prayer for the spouses that may be okay. struggling? Father God, I thank <clears throat> you for this time. I thank you for allowing us to share our story, Father God, and what you brought us through, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for every wife or husband or spouse of uh, a person who is dealing with a pornography addiction Lord, yes, God. or sex addiction. Father God, I just pray that you would give them the strength that they need, God. I pray that you would help them to do whatever is necessary, Father God. If they choose to stay and fight or if they realize that they have to break away, Father God, give them the strength. Surround them with the right people, Father God, to give them wisdom and to give them comfort and to give them help during this time. Yes, Lord. And Father, I just pray that that you, even by your spirit, Father, would comfort those people comfort them in their in their areas where they're hurting father god and give them strength father god like they didn't even know they could have to stand next to their spouse and fight if that's what Mm. they choose to do father god and i pray that you just continue to walk them through this like you've done with us father god yes lord and give them a commitment father god a, a desire just to stay committed and to stay strong father god and to stay with each other you know, when we married each other, it was for better, for worse. And this was the worst for us. But Father God, just like you brought us through, Father God, you can bring anyone through this, Lord, if they yes, rely God. and trust in you and are determined, Father. So I pray that you give them that determination, Father God, even to the spouse who might be struggling with the sin, Father. Give them the determination to fight and, and show them, Father God, the lies that they have been believing all this time, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for healing the marriages, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for great testimonies and stories coming out of this, Father God. Yes, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.